Good afternoon and welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is going to be an overview and demonstration of my uh, SASE Class E, uh, Class E solid state Tesla coil. Um, I built this about a year ago, I guess, and it's been kind of uh, on the shelf, but I pulled it out a while ago because I was looking at the Slayer Exciter type of solid state Tesla coil and I wanted to compare the performance of this one because I couldn't really remember how well it was working. So um, here's the resonator. This is a piece of PVC pipe. I used black pipe. I probably should have used white pipe. I think the black pipe might be conductive. This white part here is just a little plastic uh, insulator. It's one of those uh, uh, chopping sheets or cutting sheets that you get in the kitchen supply store. And there's 420 turns of number 27 magnet wire on that, sprayed with Krylon insulation or Krylon uh, clear Krylon to coat it and insulate it a little bit. And there's five turns of uh, number 12 house wiring, uh, and offset by a quarter inch all the way around, using these little plastic uh, spacers. The height I found out is pretty critical. Um, and then underneath there, you can just barely see the single turn uh, feedback coil, which triggers the system and makes it self-oscillate. That green wire there is the bottom end of the winding on the secondary. It's connected only to this pole, which then goes to my outside earth ground, which is also necessary for the system to operate. And then the primary and the sense coil both go into the driver board. So uh, I took the basic circuit and added a, a, an inline ammeter so I can monitor the input current. And I've found that if I go over about uh, five and a half amps, I'm starting to put the MOSFET in danger. And then at around seven amps, the thing is just uh, too outrageous. So I've generally fuse it uh, at 7 amps, but right now I've blown all my 7.5 amp fuses, so I have a 5 amp fuse in there. And I have the power supply down there set to produce uh, 50 volts, and then I have the current limiting function set to limit the current at uh, 5 amps, so that I don't blow fuses or MOSFETs. Um, there's where the DC power input comes in. This is the bias control, which controls the voltage that the MOSFET sees coming from the sense coil. And let's see, let me pull the case up here. This is a little bit of circuitry uh, using an op amp and an LED that monitors the temperature of the heat sink through a little thermistor that I have glued to the heat sink right there. When the heat sink gets really hot, this light will stay on uh, even when the oscillations are not there. Okay, so there's uh, the circuit board. I I experimented yesterday and found that an IRF force IRFP 460 MOSFET actually works better uh, in there. So that's what I've got in there now is a 460 instead of a 450. Uh, and it's uh, very simple. It just has a couple of uh, uh, capacitors and a choke and a diode or two and some resistors and uh, good, uh, good quality potentiometer for the bias control. This capacitor keeps the switch contacts from arcing over and there's the meter and that's really all there is to it uh, except that I did put a little fan up in there. There's a fan, 12 volt fan and there's the switch that controls the fan and the op amp that um, lights that light. And the light right now is telling me that the heat sink is actually still pretty warm from my last series of trials. So let's see here. Let's see if it works. Let's close it up. Put that light back in its little hole. Close it up. Fan is on. Oh. Uh, and this is a little Corona motor. Let's see, I put a, just mounted a sewing needle up in there to make a discharge point, and then I made a Corona motor out of a piece of copper tubing with another couple of needle points there and there, soldered in place, and then a little plastic guide tube 
to keep the thing upright on the pivot point of the needle. Which is right there. Okay. And then, let's see, over here, the this, this stud on the ground connection can support um, a light pole. Here's just a little aluminum pole that I've got with some neon bulbs dangling from it. And then this here is another uh, holder for a demonstration, so I usually put the compact the gutted compact fluorescent on there and then uh, there's the oscilloscope so now let's see if it's actually going to work oh yeah oh I guess I'll leave the other way on okay so we're pulling just under 5 amps and I may be able to peak that about there's the peak. There we've died. And there we've died by drawing too much current. So right about in, whoops, right about there is where we're peaking the current input. And as you can see we have a brilliant light from the compact fluorescent and lots of light from the little neons. The Corona motor, <laughs> that's pretty neat. I'm getting a little frame rate aliasing there. To my eye, it just looks like a continuous circle, but the camera is chopping it up into segments. That's pretty cool. And the waveform now, uh, the waveform is being picked up by an oscilloscope probe that's connected to this peanut can up there. <laughs> and that's what's picking up the waveform and the um, we're looking at that at 200 volts per division, right? Yeah, 200, I'm sorry, uh, 20 volts per division. Is that, no, I'm sorry, we're on channel 2. So we are actually at uh, 50 volts per division there on that. So we've got uh, 150, about 200 volts uh, at the location of the peanut can, picking up the field from that coil. And it's uh, very close to being a good sine wave. And what that means is that the coil is working exceptionally well right now. It's switching in a true class E mode, uh, which is pretty efficient and uh, working well. All right. Too bad it's uh, not particularly efficient. We're running at about 250 watts right now. All right. Thank you for watching.